Good morning. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme today, stay with me. Will you stay with me? Stay with me. The job had been working Yvonne over. She had always thrown herself into whatever job she was doing. She was passionate about fighting injustice. And Lord have mercy, it turns out there was enough injustice to have something to actually do. But now she wasn't just fighting injustice in Chicago. She was fighting a board that was afraid of change, or at least the kind of change she was trying to bring. She was having another stressful meeting with her board, and that's all she remembered. From 10 a.m. that morning until that night was a complete blank for her. She remembers all kinds of doctors in her room poking and prodding. She felt disoriented. They were asking her all kinds of questions to determine her mental status, and she was lost. She didn't have an answer to who she was, what time of the day it was, etc. She stared at them all, and that's when she heard the voice of a sister in the Lord who was also a nurse who had been sent to her speak up and say, of course she knows who she is and stated her name for her. For Yvonne, that's when she felt like she began to slowly make the journey back to herself. The sister stepped through the crowd of doctors and medical officials and reached out to Yvonne and grabbed her hand. When she had a firm hold of Yvonne's hand, she looked her in the eye and said, Sis, what do you need? Yvonne kept holding her hand, and she managed to say, please read to me Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Yvonne kept making her way back, and that nurse stayed with her. Gail's husband was diagnosed with throat cancer and a 90% chance of beating it with aggressive chemotherapy. He would eventually not be able to eat during the treatment because treatment of the throat involves not being able to eat. <laughs> the chemotherapy was awful. After it was over, the test revealed that the cancer really hadn't shrunk all that much. On, on and on to more treatments. While his body continued to weaken, when did he know? When did she know? He began to have the talk with his brothers. I'm gonna need you all to step up and be fathers to my son. In less than six months, he was dead. Gail crumbled to the ground on that first night she and all four of her kids slept, slept in the kingside bed of love together. No, it wasn't her and her husband, but her and her kids. But family and friends and family and family and family and friends and family, family leapt down, leaped down like an eagle to carry her through. The grief was so overwhelming, yanking her down with a force but all around her people staying with her. Stay with me, <laughs> will you stay with me? Stay, stay, stay with me. Through the thick of it, when things get tough, when I cannot put what I am feeling into words, will you stay with me? Psalm 23 is a psalm of comfort. It reminds us that not only in good times, but in bad times, in pastures, in valleys, that God 
is with us. In these spaces that are so hard to occupy, God is ever present. When we feel our worst miraculously, God is there. God is our shepherd. God tugs on us. This text disclosed God's presence in our life, especially when we're vulnerable. It also suggests that God and God's agents are to stay close with us when we are going through. Just like we put on our identification cards on us, don't leave home without being aware God is present. God is with us throughout our day. It is always amazing how relevant these ancient scriptures are for our modern day angst. I will walk with you. There was once this boy who was afraid to go into public bathrooms. His parents checked him, said, okay, did something happen to our son? But they began to feel confident nothing had happened to him. But going to the public bathroom by himself gave him the jitters. A long row of toilets and doors, the stern rush of water when he flushed the toilet, the eeriness of when he was in there all by himself. The bathroom was off the beaten path of the main traffic. If someone happened or if something happened, would anybody be able to hear him? Maybe he's not the only one afraid of circumstances that lie before ahead of us. Maybe spiritually, many of us are afraid to walk this journey. The psalmist tells us not only will God walk with us, but that God will walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. I imagine that includes bathrooms. I imagine that includes doctor visits. I imagine that includes the uncertainty of these times. The best relief for fear is the presence of God. A word that has become so catchy in our culture is that, is that many of us are experiencing trauma. There is so much trauma in, around us, layers of it. So much trauma that our kids are going through. I was reminded that sometimes we can be hard, we can expect a lot of our young people, and yet they are going through so much, so much trauma. Imagine what it's like for a young person to be growing up in an urban context. Our society is crumbling. We are tearing apart. The needs of people that visit our congregation on the weekdays are beyond our capacity. The behavior we see in the world is only a manifestation of the brokenness we experience internally. And then there's the C word. Doctors say while millions died of COVID, so many more died of other illnesses and other things that were impacted by COVID. Some people had to live with people they didn't like. Abusers were stuck at home. Those being abused were stuck at home with the abuser. Some folks who needed to move were sedated in loneliness. The solo creatures had to figure out how to create community living alone. The poet Laura Kelly Fanucci wrote, in the midst of it all, when this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a visitor, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. Connor Sturgeon this month came to work and killed five of his co-workers. His parents were interviewed. You could see how heavy this, this, this incident weighed on their hearts. Cry me a river. There was so much pain in their eyes, and sometimes they had to pause to catch themselves. Their son struggled with mental illness, but he was managing. But so many lives were impacted by one incident. It reminds me of when you throw the rock into the pond, the ripples that are created by that one rock. You see the victims, loved ones, the bank, the families, the community, the lady that drove by and later reflected how close she was to harm. The man who took the day off from work and realized, wow, 
Psalm 23 is a reminder for anyone who has felt this journey gets hard sometimes. Psalm 23 is for those of us facing difficult situations. Psalms 23 is for those who go to the doctor four times a week, week after week. Psalm 23 is for that single parent trying to do the best they can by their kid. Psalm 23 is for those who desperately need to go. God will never leave you. God's got you. Psalm 23 is for those who need to know God sticks around. Psalm 23 is for those needing comfort as a waterproof protection against the harshness of life. Psalm 23 is for people starting new chapters and those gracefully ending chapters. Just hang in there. Stick around. Stay with each other. Stay with me. Will you stay with me? Goodness and mercy will follow you. The church has been called to go to the valley. The church has been called to be the light in certain times. The church has been called to stay with others. The church has been called to see with God's eyes, not our own. We've been called to stand in the gap for another. We've been called to remain when the going gets tough. And while others may follow the whims and fantasies of this world, our path is one of the road less traveled. We show up for people. We stick around just as God has stayed with us. The church is called to stay with others. Will you stay with me? Will you stay with me? (laughs) Y'all looking at me like, uh... (laughs) come on, people. Yesterday was the memorial service of Sandra Bradford, and thank you so much for those that helped out and volunteered. It was nice to see this church full. So many people attesting to their love of one individual. What a difference one person can make in the world. What a difference each of you can make in the world. Just one person. The last person to get up was this little kid. And he said one day his brother was gushing in blood. And Sandra just like that like an eagle swooped down in to handle the situation and how grateful he was. But the last remark came from Michael Bradford himself. And he remarked, so many have asked him, what can they do? And his answer, his response was to what people can do is y'all can stay with me. Don't leave after this memorial. Stay with me. Stay with my boys, because they lost a mama. Stay in our lives. Come around. Visit. It's been about three weeks. It's still fresh. I looked at one of the boys, and he sat down the front. One was able to engage, and one was moving. But I looked at him, and he cried as he listened to people attest about his mom. Come around. Visit. Because when this kind of grief visits you, the only thing we really have is God and each other. Stay in our lives, said Michael. Stay with me. Will you stay with me? We cannot change the situation. We don't know what will greet us when we walk out of this door. But the one thing that is always in our control is to be present with each other. Can't change the situation, but we can be a presence that helps people on the cliffs. We can be a presence that helps people when they're in the hospital bed and they don't know their name. We can stay with people when they are in the eye of the storm. What cannot sometimes be explained with words can be explained by presence. Stay with me. May we in our homes, in our families, our communities, and especially United Church of High Park, may we stay with each other. Sometimes people think the church is just pretentious and it's about all these other things. And when it comes down to it, really, we have a powerful call to really really be present 
And I mean, sometimes we have to push beyond our own comfort zone because we draw a box around ourselves and we stay in that box. But I mean, really, really, when we hear the call of God, we have a wonderful challenge and a wonderful call to really, really be with people in their tough times. My mentor, who will be doing a memorial service for uh, next month, said to me, it's the small things. It's not the big things. It's the small things. It's showing up for birthdays. It's showing up for funerals. It's staying with people when they most need you. Stay with me. Amen.